Let's get technical. It's been a while since we've had one of our deep dives. They, and uh, I've had many of you ask for them. Look, to be frank, they don't they don't earn as many views as I would like given our channel size, so that's why I've kind of moved away from them. But every now and then it's nice to pay homage to where this channel originated. I know many of you subscribed for that kind of content. So here we go, a roughly five minute deep dive into Intel's Ring Bust. Should be pretty interesting. Stick around. So I want you to think back to pre-Sandy Bridge, before the i7-2600, before the i5-2500, pretty popular chips at the time. What did we have from Team Blue? Well, maybe something like this big boy right here, the i7-820. It's a Bloomfield chip, a variant of Nihilum, 45 nanometer lithography, four cores, eight threads, a boost to around three gigahertz. No IGP though, and no video transcoder. It was pretty bare bones by today's standards, but uh, Sandy Bridge added the GPU, right? It added the transcoder. It actually split up L3 cache pipelines between cores and it shoved in the system agent. That's traditionally the North Bridge, which freed up space on the motherboard. And when you do all of this to a die and also shrink it because it's smaller than a Nihilum die, you need a way for the bits and pieces to communicate, little highways for transferring data. But rather than run thousands of individual wires between each agent, Intel created the Ring Bus. So get this, think of the Ring Bus like a circular highway around a large city. Many suburbs not only need quick access to the urban center, but quick access to other suburbs, right? Other neighborhoods. I shouldn't need to drive through downtown to get to the next neighborhood, right? There's too much traffic, too many roads, too many stoplights. And in a very basic sort of way, that's what Intel's Ring Bus does. It acts as the interconnect between cores, the IGP, the L3 cache, and the system agent. Remember, that's traditionally the North Bridge. You don't need dedicated wires running between specifically the IGP and say chunks of L3 cache. It would overcomplicate the fab and you'd need a huge chip, but also likely run fairly hot considering how much metal, how many traces you would need in there. Uh, and so it just, the, the way to simplify it and the way to reduce latency overall was the ring bus. It beats having a connection from here to here here to here, here to here, and so on. I think you get the point. Now, to be clear, there's nothing inherently special about Intel's Ring bus, apart from the fact that it's been so well executed on a chip level, but it still is a bus, which in electronics carries a definition of a subsystem interconnect, a way for different systems to communicate. Now, the Ring bus is divided into four rings. The data ring, which does what you think it does when it transmits data. The request ring, which also does probably what you think it does. The acknowledge ring, which confirms the request. And then the snoop ring, which actively looks for said request from other agents. Together, they work to minimize latency and thus maximize core throughput. Latency is reduced by nature of the ring's design, by the way. Data will transfer via the shortest physical path between the agents. So bus bandwidth also scales with core count and that makes it effective for most consumer grade applications. Uh, there is a limit, uh, kind of a soft limit of supported agents in a single ring bus system though. Cores further away from each other in the die will inevitably experience more latency. And we're talking about further away physically, like that that's that's how much latency can be incurred between cores that are physically distant from each other. Uh, and as core count increases over the years, which it certainly has, thanks large part to AMD, uh, so too has the inherent latency. So there's a battle to, to keep up with or stay on top of keeping latency down. Chips with more than eight cores traditionally utilize more than one ring bus, or more recently what Intel's called uh, a mesh topology. In this case, each agent acts as its own router of sorts and would send data where it's needed via the shortest path across the mesh. So now those individual routers are determining the shortest pass between uh, the ring buses or whatever, the mesh topology uh, to minimize latency. And that's I, obviously better than a, a standalone controller, which would have to be in charge of millions of connections at, at one time. It's just uh, probably too much. It's why Intel decided to have each uh, agent act as its own router. There's actually a great article from Anantech that summarizes a few issues associated with traditional ring buses and HDT chips. So we're talking uh, more recently like X99, X299 CPUs, Haswell E, Broadwell, things like that. Uh, but I've linked it down below if you are interested in learning a bit more about it. I do hope this short little video has uh, helped somewhat clear up a few questions you might have had regarding the ring bus, what it does in essence. Uh, and if you've never heard of it before, at least now you know its general functions and why it's been a staple in Intel CPUs for 
nearly a decade now. That's all from me. Leave a comment, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.